Good morning. During today's legislative hearing, we will consider five bills. S-2385, Tribal Access to Clean Water Act of 2023. S-2796, a bill to provide for the equitable settlement of certain Indian land disputes regarding land in Illinois and for other purposes. S-2868, a bill to accept the request to revoke the charter of incorporation of the Lower Sioux Indian community of the state of Minnesota at the request of that community and for other purposes. S-3022, the IHS Workforce Parity Act of 2023. And S-3230, the Winnebago Land Transfer Act of 2023. S-2385 was introduced by Senator Bennett and has eight co-sponsors. The bill would expand access to funding provided through the investment, in, through the infrastructure bill for clean water uh, across Indian country. Specifically, it authorizes the U.S. Department of Agriculture to make loans and grants for technical assistance, authorize additional funding for technical assistance to, to existing Indian Health Service water facilities programs, and authorize funding for the Bureau of Reclamation's existing Native American Technical Assistance Program. S-2796 was introduced by Senator Mullen. This bill would waive any statute of limitation <clears throat> and grant the United States Court of Federal Claims jurisdiction to decide a land claim by the Miami Tribe of Oklahoma arising under its 1805 Treaty of, Treaty of Grouse Land with the United States. The bill would also extinguish any and all other claims the tribe, its members, descendants, or predecessors in interest have to lands in Illinois and clear title to those lands. S-2868 was introduced by Senators Smith and Klobuchar. <clears throat> Excuse me. This bill would revoke at the request of the Lower Sioux Indian community the tribe's corporate charter under Section 17 of the Indian Reorganization Act. S-3022 was introduced by Senator Cortez Masto and Senator Mullen. This bill would permit the Indian Health Service scholarship and loan repayment assistance recipients to fulfill service obligations through half-time clinic practice. S-3230 was introduced by Senator Fisher and has three co-sponsors. This bill would transfer approximately 1,585 acres of land currently administered by the United States Army Corps of Engineers to the Bureau of Indian Affairs to be held in trust for the Winnebago Tribe of Nebraska as part of the tribe's reservation. The bill would prohibit gaming activities on these lands under the Indian Gaming Regulatory Act. Before I uh, turn to the vice chair for her opening statement, I'd like to extend my welcome and thanks to our witnesses for joining us today. I look forward uh, to your testimony and our discussion. And <clears throat> just for the audience and the panelists' um, information, there are, I think, seven hearings happening at the exact same time and a Republican caucus meeting, which I'm sure is going smoothly. Um, and. Um, uh, so um, I think now I will recognize uh, Senator Cortez Masto to introduce uh, her witness. Senator Cortez Masto. Thank you. Thank you, Chairman. I am so pleased to be introducing uh, Angie Wilson. Angie serves as the Tribal Health Director for the Reno Sparks Indian Colony in Reno, Nevada. It is the largest tribal health clinic in my state, having served more than uh, 6,000 American Indians and Alaska Natives. Ms. Wilson is an enrolled member of the Pitt River Tribe of Northern California and Klamath Modoc descendant of the Klamath Tribe of Southern Oregon. Uh, Ms. Wilson's career spanned nearly 30 years in tribal health administration. Apart from her directorship, she serves several tribal delegations, uh, including the National CMS Tribal Technical Advisory Group, the California Area IHS Tribal Advisory Committee and the Pitt River Tribal Health Service Board of Directors. Over her career, Ms. Wilson has directed multi-award winning tribal health clinic and has received recognition from the National uh, Indian Health Board for her significant work uh, in advocacy to strengthen quality healthcare initiatives and sustainability methodologies for American Indian and Alaska Native communities. I welcome Angie to this committee in the hearing today. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, uh, Senator Cortez Masto. And Senator Smith, are you ready to introduce your witness? I know you just sat down, so I didn't want to jam you up. <laughs> no, I think I am ready, Mr. Chair. Thank you very much. It's one of those mornings, right? I understand. If you if you want me to stall for thirty seconds, I'd be pleased <laughs> to do so. Good morning. <laughs> I want to thank uh, Chair Schatz and Vice 
Chair Murkowski for holding this hearing today and also for including my bill to revoke the corporate charter of the Lower Sioux Indian community at the request of the tribe. And I also want to welcome President uh, Larson, Deuce Larson of Lower Sioux to the committee. Uh, Deuce has served on the council for over a decade and is a tremendous leader for the tribe. I'm honored to uh, call Deuce my friend as well as my um, colleague, and I'm very grateful that he's with us here today to discuss the importance of this bill to the Lower Sioux. Um, Mr. Chair, you know that the Indian Reorganization Act of 1934 set about a new era, a new era of federal Indian policy, one that allowed for self-determination and government-to-government -government relationships between tribal nations and the federal government. And it also created these paternalistic and burdensome corporate charters under which tribes would theoretically be able to conduct their business activities. And for Lower Sioux, this corporate charter limits transactions that they can make to $1,000 without the direct consent of the Secretary of the Interior. So $1,000 or you got to go to the Secretary of the Interior. It limits lease terms, corporate income, and prohibits the sale of land held by the corporation. So the charter is outdated and Lower Sioux is asking Congress to revoke it and that is the purpose of the bill um, that we have here. So um, I am uh, grateful for the opportunity to have a hearing on this bill and I welcome Deuce to the committee and welcome to all of our, um, all of our panelists here today. It's great to be with you. Thank you. Thank you, Senator Smith, and we'll now recognize the Vice Chair for her opening statement. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. My apologies for being late. We're bouncing in between three different hearings and a caucus meeting uh, all this morning, so it's a busy day, but thank you and welcome to our witnesses. Appreciate you being here and the contribution you will provide to the committee. I'm gonna keep my comments brief, um, as I know members will be speaking about their bills, but I am pleased. This is a good range of, of issues that we have before the committee today, everything from promoting tribal economic development to hiring and retaining doctors at IHS to restoring tribal lands and settling outstanding tribal land claims. We also have legislation aimed at expanding access to water in Indian country. Uh, and I would just like to make a couple short comments because I have raised it so often in this committee about the significance, the importance, the responsibility to deliver clean, affordable water to our Native communities. IHS estimates that one in 10 Native Americans lacks access to water or indoor plumbing. This is 2024. And so to know that that statistic is still one that so many are living with is really very troubling. Um, I come from a place where we have families that that uh, have to haul or barge in their water. Um, some cases, river water is the only option, and as clean as we might want to think, that is, it doesn't meet your federal water quality standards, but it is truly one of our great public health challenges in, in rural Alaska and in so many parts of, of the country as well. We have made some, some progress through the bipartisan infrastructure law in clearing the back the backlog of water and sanitation projects at IHS. Uh, communities that have waited for decades to get piped water and sewer are finally getting connected. That's great. We had a, a hearing in September on the, uh, on the trust responsibility of providing for water and sanitation needs for those in, um, in our native communities. And uh, again, a recognition that the need is great and there is so much more that remains to be done. It is, it's not only the construction side of it, but it's also the operation and the maintenance. And so the federal investment that is made as we seek to meet our trust obligations, I think is so important. We have launched a GAO study to examine the operation and maintenance issue in greater detail. Um, but I think it's pretty clear that the federal government has to start working with tribes now to address O&M before costs begin to compound in, in the coming years. So a lot to be done in that space. And, uh, and I think the opportunity that we have with leadership that is before the committee now to, to help us address some of these challenges, raise them to the level of the legislation that's being considered today, and, um, and then move to improve outcomes is, is good. So thank you for the opportunity, Mr. Chairman. 
Thank you very much, uh, Vice Chair Murkowski. And now we will introduce the uh, remainder of our panel. Um, I'll start with the Honorable Melanie Ann Egerin, the Assistant Secretary for Legislation, Health and Human Services uh, at Health and Human Services. Uh, Ms. Uh, Catherine isom Claus, the Deputy Assistant Secretary of Indian Affairs at the Department of Interior. The Honorable Manuel Hart, the President of the Ute Mountain Tribe in Colorado. Welcome. The Honorable Douglas Langford, Chief of the Miami Tribe of Oklahoma, Miami, Oklahoma. Thank you. Uh, the Honorable uh, Victoria Kitchian, the Chairwoman of the Winnebago Tribe of Nebraska, Winnebago. We appreciate you being here. And I will remind all of our witnesses that we have your full written testimony. Um, did I miss somebody? Yeah, they, they were introduced by the members, yes. Um, I want to remind our witnesses that you have our full written, we have your full written testimony. I'll be all right. Um, uh, we have your full written testimony, and please keep it uh, 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 within five minutes um, uh, so that we have uh, time for questions. And I'll start with Ms. Egerin. Uh, please uh, proceed with your testimony. 